I'm David the Good. We lived in the tropics for quite a while, and I had a plant nursery that had tropical plants, and I grew up in South Florida. And even though I don't live in the tropics any longer, we do get tropical fruit, a lot of us, from the grocery store. And you might be interested in trying to propagate some of that tropical fruit, whether you want to keep it alive on a porch or in a greenhouse, or just for fun to see what happens. So today we are going to cover a few popular tropical fruit and how to propagate them at home and grow them from seed because there are some tricks to tropicals that a lot of people used to temper fruits just don't know. Get up in the morning time, making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the noonday biscuits. Get up in the afternoon, making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the nighttime biscuits. Get up in the morning time, making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the Let's start with mangoes one of the very best fruit in the entire world. This is a mango pit. We ate the mango, came from our friend Sar down at Echo, and he brought us some tropical fruit. So what I like to do, now you can plant the entire, you can plant the entire pit, but what I like to do is figure out where it doesn't feel like it has any mango in it and cut it open. And if you have a pair of shears or a pair of scissors, this isn't that hard to do. Depends on your pit, some of them are really hard. But I like to cut along the edge, open it up, and see what we have inside. Like many tropical fruits, mango seeds do not keep. So if you get mango, if you get a mango, you'd better get that thing planted quickly. Here's why. You see that? That's the plant right there, growing out of this already. Look at all this root mass inside of the pit. This has been sitting on our counter for about a week and a half. Tropical seeds often don't keep. So all we have to do now is plant this and it's gonna shoot up and it will grow so fast on the energy in here, you would not believe it. Another thing to know about mangoes is this is a monoembryonic mango pit. Monoembryonic means one embryo. So there's one baby mango in here. If you get a polyembryonic, you can actually tell. Let's peel the skin back a little bit. This won't hurt it. In here, you will see divisions, little divided portions, and there will be multiple baby potential mango trees in there. The monoembryonic ones are pretty common in highly bred cultivated varieties, but they are sexually reproduced, whereas a polyembryonic one may have one of those embryos that's actually a cross between two mango trees, but the rest of them will be clones of the mother. Now this is a benefit to us because we know exactly what we're getting. But if we're doing a mango breeding program, that's not a benefit because we know exactly what we're getting and we want something different in a breeding program. So with a monoembryonic, we plant it, we don't know exactly what we're gonna get, but if the parents are good, you're probably gonna get a decent mango tree, if not the best in the world. So we will plant it, and if we don't like it, we can always graft it. Another benefit of the polyembryonic mangoes is that a polyembryonic mango producing true to type also thinks that it is older. It thinks that it's a grown-up mango already and they will often fruit much faster than monoembryonic, which can take six years, seven years, eight years. A polyembryonic can actually fruit within two to three years just as a little baby because it already thinks it's grown up. Our next plant is avocado. You may have seen the avocado trick of just sticking some toothpicks in an avocado pit and then suspending it in a glass of water, which often causes it to root quite nicely out of there. But I prefer to just take the pits right out of the avocado, bury them into some soil, and let them grow that way. There are different varieties of avocados. Some of them are more cold hardy than others. All of these were tropical avocado varieties, which are not particularly suited to my climate, but I'm going to grow them anyways, because I can't help myself and I have to save every single seed. But these guys here, you stick them to this side. It's pretty obvious which side is up. But it doesn't really matter that much. See, they have this papery shell. I usually stick the pointy side down and put this side up and just let them grow out of it. 
but I've just buried them in the ground. I've had them fall into the compost pile. They come up fine. Doesn't really matter. I have had better luck taking them and putting them into soil than I have with the toothpick method, though I've done that too. So just bury them. And you don't have to even have individual pots for them. You could stick three, four, five of them. You know, let's say you had a guacamole party. You take a bunch of them and just stick them in a big pot as they sprout, you can carefully just lift them out and put them into their own pots very simply or plant them directly into the ground where you want them to grow. But again, like many other tropicals, these guys got to get in the ground quickly or they will dry out, get rubbery, and they will die on you. You can't keep these seeds like you could keep temperate seeds. You want to get that pit right into something where it can start growing right away. Our next tropical fruit is one of my favorites. It's actually somewhat hardy, just a little bit hardy compared to some of them. This is the star fruit. My friend Curtis has a star fruit tree growing in a protected location all the way up near Ocala, Florida. And that is a climate that freezes, but he has it alongside of his carport and it does just fine underneath a little bit of an overhang. So these guys came right out of the fruit. And again, they don't keep very long. Their cousin Bolimbi is the same way. They'll keep for a little while on the counter, but not very long. So these guys gotta get in the ground and they can fruit in just a few years from a seed. It's a little bit slow compared to grafting them, but it's not that big a deal. Put them into some somewhat moist soil, give them a little bit of time. They'll be popping up before you know it, about a month or so. Our next is sapodilla. Sapodilla is a wonderful, delicious fruit. Tastes like a pie, like a sugar pie. These guys have a nice hard shell. They do not keep very long at all. You get them out of the fruit, you want to get them in the ground. And I do not refrigerate tropical seeds. I'm gonna eat them, eat the fruit, put the seeds on my counter and be ready to put them in the ground. They do not refrigerate well sometimes. They'll just die if you put them in the fridge because remember, they're tropicals. They are not gonna be happy in a cold climate. Some of them will actually die in the fridge. So it's better to just keep them on the counter and plant them as soon as possible. These guys you plant in the ground, they usually come up in about a month and they, they grow at a pretty moderate rate and it does very well all the way down through South Florida. It is a solid zone 10 to 11 tree. Doesn't need any particular great care to make you some wonderful fruit and it makes a big, beautiful tree. Our last fruit is citrus. In particular, a lemon. This is just a lemon from the grocery store. And lemons actually grow pretty quickly from seed and can fruit in just a few years. They're one of the faster with grapefruit coming in at maybe eight to 10 years. And limes, like key limes, can be two to three years. They're very fast, comparatively. Calamondin's about three years. And lemons usually come in the middle, three to four or five years. But it's definitely worth doing. They're more cold hardy than most tropicals. They would kind of be a subtropical. So first of all, we've got to get our seeds out of this. Citrus seeds do not keep like many of the others. This is a recurring theme with tropicals. Unlike temperate seeds, which have to sit through a season and you know be covered in leaves and go through the cold and survive all that time, you know, think of what happens when the fruit falls in the summer. Tropicals are coming from a year-round season where it's always warm. They need to be able to get growing as soon as possible. And so they're not designed to keep. They're designed to fall on the ground and grow as absolutely fast as possible to outcompete everything else around them in the crazy tropical climate. So these citrus, if you let them dry out on your counter, somebody wrote me and said, I don't understand. I can't ever seem to grow citrus. And I said, well, how long did you keep the seeds? Oh, I just had them in a napkin. I don't know, it's been six months or so. No, they're dead. They're dead, go get another fresh fruit and try again. 
pull them right out and put them into some, you know, semi-moist soil. You actually don't want them to be too wet. Semi-moist soil, put them in there. They are going to grow and they will come up in about a month. You'll get these little pretty dark green shoots that are prettier than my dirty fingernails and they will start to emerge. I would take all of these and stick them into one pot and then in a short period of time, about a month, you'll start to get a bunch of little green shoots and then you can pot them up and let them grow. And lemons go very close to true to type. So if you plant lemon seeds, you're gonna get lemons. Generally, if you plant most citrus, you will get a decent citrus. There was a fellow that I visited that had a bunch of seed grown citrus and he had planted from various things, oranges and grapefruits, and they all made oranges and grapefruits and lemons and limes, and it was fine. It's just not gonna be exactly what you started with, even though I still think it's worth doing. And that's all you need to know about citrus. Thank you for joining me. I think it's definitely worth growing fruit trees from seed. I love it, I do it all the time. If it gives you something you don't like, graft it. If it gives you something you do like, name it after yourself because now you have a new variety that you can call whatever you want to. And if you want to learn more about plant propagation, please check out my book, Free Plants for Everyone. Very popular guide to plant propagation with illustrations and it will tell you how to grow just about any plant that you want to grow. You can propagate that old pear tree that your grandmother had. You can start seedling apples. You can start beans that you got in a sock drawer. Whatever, I tell you how to do it. Everything from grafting to air layering, it's all in there. The good guide to plant propagation, free plants for everyone. So check that out, I hope you will. I appreciate y'all, and until next time, may your thumbs always be green. Ready when this. you are. See this? I'm juggling this. It looks just like I'm juggling because I'm just throwing the one. It's probably coming right up in there and think, man, he's got to be doing three of them.